Before you get started, pause to write down five behaviors you would consider deviant. Once you are finished, rank your behaviors with one being the least deviant and five being the most deviant. What were your results? Keep these in mind as you move through the lecture. Deviance is anything outside of what would be considered normal for that context. How, though, do we know when a deviation from normal has occurred? Consider the following two contexts involving public nudity. The Fremont Arts Council holds the Fremont Solstice Parade annually. There are many prohibited behaviors, including things like no real weapons or fire, and no written or printed words or logos. Nudity is not prohibited at the Fremont Solstice Parade. In fact, it is celebrated. Public nudity in this context is not deviant. In general, public nudity is considered deviant in the United States. The Fremont Solstice Parade is deviant because it views nudity as appropriate when most public gatherings in the United States do not. For another example, imagine you enter Tate Student Center here at UGA and see a group of people without clothes on. Public nudity in the Tate Student Center would seem a little shocking or abnormal. Why? The university has guidelines regarding public nudity that specify that public displays of nudity on campus are not appropriate. To be naked in Tate Student Center would be an infraction on the university code of conduct, a deviation from the normal behavior outlined by the university. Sociologists studying deviance are often doing so under the social constructionist paradigm, which assumes all knowledge to be subjective. Subjective is not to be mistaken as meaning not real. Instead, think of subjective in terms of defining the situation. Depending on a variety of social factors, people may define the same situation differently. There are also various methods of defining the situation. These methods can be categorized as formally defined and informally defined. Formally defined deviance, also sometimes called normative positivistic or objectively given deviance, is based on the idea that people operate together in society by mutual adherence to common rules. Constructionist sociologists critique that formally defined deviance exists outside of law and policy. But for the most part, formally defined deviance is understood to take one of the following forms. Each form has a different degree of formality. Law and policy have the most formality. Folkways are everyday norms, the habits and quirks you develop because others in your social circle have them. Folkways do not need to be written down. They are the things everyone knows. Deviating from folkways is not cons generally considered disruptive. For example, laptop or tablet use is becoming a common behavior at UGA. Your study group may expect you to show up to study with a laptop or a tablet, so proudly announcing that you take handwritten notes for every class might seem deviant. It would probably not cause conflict with your group members, though. They may think your behavior a little strange. They may even say something about it. But the lack of laptop or tablet usage likely won't end your study session or be grounds to exile you from the study group. Mores are norms based in morality or shared values. Similar to folkways, mores do not need explicit expression for people to know what they are and that they exist. 
A deviation from a moor will likely produce more tension than a deviation from a folkway, but will not be enough to facilitate something like a lawsuit. For example, at UGA, wearing red and black or items with a UGA logo demonstrates that you value school spirit and your home institution. If I come to class here at UGA wearing orange and blue or items with an Auburn logo, I would be deviant because I am valuing another institution, Auburn, instead of my home institution, UGA. I might get questions, but differently than with folkways, these questions will imply that I've done something wrong. This is often done using tone or language. If there is an athletics event in the near future, people might bark at me or shout something like, Auburn sucks. More contentious than a folkway, but still largely harmless. The most harm to occur in this situation would be emotional, something like embarrassment or shame. This harm can be reduced without major intervention of another party. Laws, on the other hand, force major intervention of another party, the courts. Laws define deviance using legal code or policy. Deviation from the law can result in things like imprisonment or large monetary fines. Legal sanctions can cause emotional harm, but they can also cause harm to social status, physical well-being, and economic livelihood. Informally defined deviants can also include folkways and moors. Sociologists studying informally defined deviants often do so with a critical lens. They argue against the idea that there are a given set of social norms, which is in direct contrast to formally defined deviants. They point out that mores are based in moral values, which are not necessarily uniform within a population or across populations. Critical conceptions of deviance argue that deviance is status and context based. They reject that any behavior or context is inherently bad, negative, or immoral. Instead, deviance is defined by those in power, often in attempt to maintain or enhance their social standing. The idea here is that minority views are suppressed by those in power by labeling those views deviant. Table 1.1 in your textbook further clarifies the distinction between conceptions of deviance. This is the IgG textbook, page five. Notice the difference in research question associated with each conception. These are the questions that theory is supposed to answer. So the chart says things like, what leads an individual to engage in deviant behavior for a positive or normative conception? A relativist or social constructionist might ask, what characteristics increase the likelihood that an individual or behavior will be defined as deviant? A critical conception of deviance would ask, what is the experience of the homeless and who is served by their treatment as deviant? Now think about how you define deviance. What do you consider deviant? Think about your list that you made at the beginning of this presentation. Which conception do you currently use? Popular media includes many depictions of deviance. Crime shows and movies are used to depict criminal deviance, formally defined deviance as illegal. A majority of deviance is minor, and even when considered criminal by law, deviance is rarely addressed in legal dispute. More often than not, 
deviance is addressed informally through things like argument, physical violence, and emotional exile. For example, giving someone the cold shoulder. Reality TV is a popular outlet for portraying non-criminal deviants, such as seen in shows like My Strange Addiction and Hoarders. Think about the popular media you consume. Are there different explanations for different depictions of deviant behavior? Are the reactions to the deviants uniform? How is the deviant sanctioned or controlled, if at all? Is there evidence of social control here? Some examples from film depicting deviants are Hunger Games, so political deviants. Silver Linings Playbook is behavioral deviants. Um, and then The Purge, again, behavioral deviants. On TV, we can look at things like reality TV, um, Beyond My Strange Addiction. Uh, it also mentions things like Sister Wives and Seinfeld. Be careful with Sister Wives, though, because this is not necessarily an informally sanctioned deviant act, depending on where you live in the United States. On the internet, you can see deviants in pop culture in things like Dr. Pimple Popper on YouTube. Theory can be used to explain deviants in different contexts. Sociological theories of deviants provide a big picture explanation for deviants. These explanations are linked to groups and institutions, not individual experiences. You may be able to think of cases in which theory does not apply, an exception to the rule. The exceptions do not necessarily mean the theory is wrong, but they are useful for comparing and testing theories. Take note of the times you find yourself thinking of the exception. This might be an indication that you've identified what is called a theoretical gap. And this gap will be useful for using theory to explain real world deviance.